السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اللہ آف یو ہیو ایسٹ می ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ٹائم ٹریول دیر آر لاٹ آف اسٹوریز ان دا قرآن دیٹ ٹاکس اباؤٹ دا ٹریولنگ آف دا ٹائم ریمبر ٹائم از اے ویری ریلیٹو اینٹیٹی ٹائم مے ٹریول ایٹ اے ڈفرینٹ اسپیڈ فار ون اینٹیٹی دین فار دی ادر اینٹیٹی اٹ از کوائٹ پاسبل دیٹ بوتھ اینٹیٹیز آر فزیکلی ان دا سیم پلیس And the time is traveling at a different pace for each of the entities. We'll look at several stories from the Quran. So hold on tight. We're going to start with Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the story of a man who went through a city that was in rebels. To imagine, you can think about in today's time, Gaza. how things have happened and it was around the same area that this person was going past by and in the books of tafsir his name was Uzair and he had a donkey and he had some food on him maybe some drinks so he settled someplace within those rebels and wondered how everything will be brought back to life And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him in a sleep state for a hundred years. فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ مِئَةَ عَامٍ And then he was raised back. So he coming back to life or he coming out of that state that he was in for a hundred years and the world around him is going at the same rate of hundred years. But in what was asked from him, how long have you stayed in the state? His reply was, a day, half a day, maybe two days. I don't know, probably not more than a day. So to him, it appeared as he was in that state for a day. But he was told, no, you have been in that state for a hundred years. Hundred years were going past around you, but you were in the state of a day or so. But there is something around you on which not a second has passed and something around you which has witnessed a hundred years and you yourself probably witnessed half a day and he was shown his donkey that turned to dust in a hundred years nothing of it existed and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him that look at it as I will bring it back to life Now something from birth all the way to coming in a full-blown adulthood, it takes years, years. But here this individual, Uzair alayhi salam, witnessed all of that in front of his eyes in, a, in moments that how dust turned into a skeleton and skeleton had muscles and skin and the life was given to that and the donkey was as if it was a hundred years ago. He witnessed time travel happening in front of his own eyes. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then Allah told this gentleman, or Zayr alayhi salam, to look at his food. Lam yatasanna, not even a second has passed on it. Allahu Akbar. Three objects in the same place. And then each one of them is referencing time in different dimension. The relativity of the time is expressed here where Uzair alayhi salam after coming back witnessed the time travel on another object in front of his eyes. Now that gives us a great evidence into how time will travel differently for different people on the Day of Judgment. Where some people, the Day of Judgment will be like 50,000 years. For some of them it will be a thousand years. For some of them it would be like uh, half a day. For some of them it would be like praying Salat al-Vuhr. Ten minutes. And the Day of Judgment is done. Same place in different dimensions. Also, on the Day of Judgment, people will be standing and sweating in their own sweat. For some of them, the sweat will reach their ear lobes. For some of them, their sweat will reach their ankles. For some of them, will reach their, their, their kneecaps. Same place, the sweat will not flow out as if you probably will think things flow out because everybody will be in its own dimension. Things happen in that dimension, stay in that dimension. 
سبحان الله إن الله على كل شيء قدير. Look at the story of Ibrahim عليه السلام. Again we see that things coming back to life in front of you. Where Ibrahim عليه السلام had four birds. And Allah ordered him to take these four birds, train them, mix it all up and put them on four different mountains and call them up. After they were dead and their meat was all mixed up, even with the feathers, now they are all coming back the way they were before they were slaughtered. Witnessing the traveling of the time on other objects as witnessed by Ibrahim alayhi salam. The things from nothing coming back to life. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then, <clears throat> these are some of the stories that we have talked about. And then, uh, there is another story in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about thousands of men. وَهُمْ أُلُوفٌ إِذْ حَذَرَ الْمَوْتِ When they were afraid of death, they, their, their they leave their settlements, they went outside, and they died, and so much time passed on them that they were dead for some time. In some tafasir it says they were even given a mass burial. And then they were raised back to life on the dua of Hizqil alayhi salam. So Hizqil alayhi salam witnessed people coming out of the grave as and then getting life. Something that spans a long time is happening in front of his eyes. Allahu Akbar. So witnessing the traveling of the time. Subhanallah. And Uzair alayhi salam's story is different because he is, he is not just witnessing the time travel. He's part of that time travel but in a different dimension. To him it's half a day or a day and for something that is that he owns it is not even a second and then something he owns goes through that in a hundred years and then looking at the story of surah in surah al-kahf the people of the cave in the cave for 300 years 300 years and their body still shows that they're what Half a day to a day old. That's what exactly they told each other. Because when they woke up, they saw each other. They didn't see that each one of them is like gray hair, long hair. And then, you know, they're old, wrinkly. These were like a bunch of teens, maybe in their early 20s. Young people. And they looked at each other and they said, looks like we slept for a long time. But how long do you think we have slept? Somebody quoted one time, somebody else quoted another time, and then they finally decided Allah knows best. For 300 years, they slept to them only one day. To them, it was only one day as they didn't, they themselves were time traveling into the future. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And they were not dead, they were sleeping. Quran says they were turning. And with them was their dog who was guarding the cave. The dog also experienced the 300 years of a travel into the future. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. And we will talk more about some other time about the marvels of the, the story of the people of the cave. It's a beautiful story and it has so much detail. I believe some of the detail we can't even understand today. We probably, maybe in the coming times, when the science makes leaps to that level, people will be looking at the tafasir and will be like, okay, I believe, we believe that there is another angle, a scientific angle to understanding this particular story. It's a marvel. It's, it's out of this world things. It's so mesmerizing. I mean, like you look at it and you look at it from the scientific point of view and you're like, Subhanallah, Allah knows best, Alhamdulillah. And then, if you are looking at the story of Mi'raj, you will witness that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did all this travel and came back and time has not passed. And time has not passed. Subhanallah. Because he was traveling Maybe faster than the speed of light. 
And that's why he was prepared for this travel by the angels. If you remember, at the beginning of the story of Mi'raj, he had an open heart surgery. And he was prepared from inside for this kind of a travel. And then after that, he had a ride called Burak, lightnings. It's a plural of Burak. And it is traveling at a rate Allah knows best. And then when it came back, Allah knows best. No time had passed. It was still the same night that the Prophet left. He came back. Allahu Akbar, going all, through all the seven heavens and doing all of those mushahadat, all of those experiences that he had, observations he had had. And then coming back, and not a second has passed. Allahu Akbar. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. So that is another thing that where things are traveling at a different rate, at a different pace. And then <coughs> we have other things in the Quran. The story of Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi salam. Where Khidr alayhi salam has been given the knowledge of time has been given the knowledge of time where he is sitting in a boat and by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course he foresee what is about to happen in the coming time with this boat if certain measures are not taken and he's meeting a child he is meeting a child and with the help, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the, in that knowledge because this is ilmul ladunni. That's why he says, Mil ladunni. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Mil ladunni ilma. I am the one who, I, who gave him the special knowledge. He is foreseeing the future of the child. If certain circumstances are not happening here, then things will happen differently. Similarly, looking at that wall that he's fixing, if these measures are not taken today, then whatever is behind the wall, whatever is hidden from the naked eyes of everybody, nobody knows about it, will then be opened and things will be different if this wall is not fixed. So being able to foresee things before they are happen and traveling to that point and then coming back and taking actions today. And none of that for himself. It was all on Allah's command. Things that need to be tweaked or changed around. Allahu Akbar. So we see there are so many examples and these are not the only examples. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam told us about things that will happen even as far as what people entering into the Jannah and people entering into the Jahannam. And he's seeing things in other dimensions. That's a different thing. So, being able to travel back in time? No. <clears throat> being able to travel at a pace that nobody else is traveling? Yes. I've told you so many stories. Things happening in different dimensions at different rate and pace, yes. For some, the time travel of the 300 years is not even a second, like the food. And for some, traveling a, th a long time is, 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 is probably half a day. So, you know, the food, 100 years was not even a second for the food. The story of Uzair alayhi salam. But donkey experienced a hundred years. Uzair alayhi salam experienced not even a day. So this traveling into the future is basically what is being expressed here. And that's why when Uzair alayhi salam went back to his people, everybody refused to recognize him because a hundred years had passed. How is it possible that he's still so young? And then he had to go through some and people tested him literally to see if it is really Uzair alayhi salam. And luckily there was only one person alive in his, among his people who knew who Uzair alayhi salam was. And then he was recognized. So there are some things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done in the past to show us the signs. But 
you know people should not expect all of these things to happen now because there is no point everything has a point everything has a hikmah everything has a reason behind Allah knows best but these are only some of the stories from the Quran and the Hadith that talk about the time travel I hope it was value-added uh, lecture for all of you. Uh, and inshallah, we will continue with our part two of the world of souls. Um, so inshallah, we will bring that to you as well. And if there is any other topic, let me know in the comment section below. And inshallah, we'll talk about that, that as well. Till next time, assalamu alaikum.